Hey, I'm TDG Payne, and today I'm going to show you how to install, record, and live stream using your Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD. First, you're going to want to install the capture card in your PCIe slot, then start up your computer and insert the included CD-ROM. Go to Start, Computer, and then double-click to install the software. You can also go to avermedia.com, click on Capture, find your capture card, click on AP and Drivers, and you'll see a whole list of drivers you can download. Now that you have it installed, you're going to open up Avermedia Center 3D. If you notice at the top, you'll see a few tabs, Capture, Video, Music, Pictures, and Settings. Right now, we're going to click on Settings, go to Capture, configure input source, configure recording, and you're going to select the MPEG-2 format. There are other formats, but I think this one has the best compression quality. Now click edit, and you'll just copy down these settings. There are other resolutions you can choose from, but it's best to choose the same one that your console is set to. Once you're done, click save, then click save again. And while you're still in settings, go to General, Configure Storage, and then here you're going to select your destination folder where you want to save your recorded videos. Once you're done, just click OK and then click Save. Now you can go back to the main screen. And before we go any further, we're going to set up the HDMI cables. On the back of the box, it suggests that you plug your game system directly into the capture card and then you play on your computer monitor. But instead of using their way, I went and bought an HDMI splitter. You can buy this splitter on Amazon.com for around $25. A splitter is essentially just a little device that has one HDMI input and two outputs. Here's the setup you'll need for this to work. You have your game system going in, and then you have two outputs, one to your TV, and then one to your capture card. Once you have your cables plugged in, just plug in the power cord and wait a few seconds and you'll eventually see all the LEDs light up. If they all light up, that means you're good. Just wait a few seconds and then you should get a signal on your TV. If you don't get a signal, then check your cables and try again. Now back on your PC, you're going to go ahead and click on the capture tab. And if you hooked up everything correctly, you should see a preview of your game system. Now, if you want to record using component cables or your PS3, you're going to have to choose the D-sub input. But for now, we're just going to choose HDMI. And down here, you'll see a toolbar. You have your snapshot button, your aspect ratio button, your mute, and your volume controls. And to record, you simply press this record button, and you'll start recording. You'll notice that you're currently recording when you see the blinking red dot. And to stop, you just click the stop button. Now, you can also click this live button. If you don't have an HDMI splitter and you prefer to play on your computer monitor, you can just click full screen and you can play and record from here. Once you're done recording, you can close Aver Media Center. And now go to your destination folder and you should see your recorded video right in that folder. For this tutorial, I'm using Sony Vegas. You can use any other video software. If you are using Sony Vegas, just go to the project properties and then copy down these settings. Don't forget to save your template. And once you're done, you can click OK. Now go to the folder where your recorded video is and then import it into Sony Vegas. Now drag it into the timeline and you can play your video to make sure it recorded correctly. Now an important thing that everyone should do to make your video look better is to right click on your video, go to switches, and then disable resample. Now you can edit your video to your liking. And now go up to this button in the corner, render as, click it, and then you'll see this window. For the video format, choose main concept AVC, and you can choose any template you want, you can choose the default, then click custom. You can copy down the settings here. You can pause the video if you like.
Here are the audio settings. And set the project rendering quality to best. And don't forget to save your template so you can use these settings next time. Click OK. Name the file whatever you want and choose your destination. Then all you have to do is click save. And then you'll just have to wait a little while for your video to render. Once your video is done rendering, go to whatever you saved it and you'll see your video file. You can then upload this to YouTube. Next, we're going to talk about how to live stream. I use the XSplit broadcaster, so you can go to XSplit.com and then you can register right on the front page. Once you're done registering, you can then download and install XSplit. Once it's done, you can just launch the software and then you'll come to a login screen. Just enter your credentials for the account you just made and you can click log me in automatically so you don't have to log in every time you launch the software. Once you launch it, you'll see a blank screen. All you have to do is click add, add camera, and then select the broadcaster HD. It's going to start out small, but then you're just going to drag it to take up the full preview window. Next, you're going to select your capture card, click settings, configure, and then video capture. You're going to select NTSC M or PAL if you're in Europe. Go to settings again, configure, and then go to video capture format. You're going to select YU Y2, and for the resolution, you're going to set whatever your game console is set to. It's either going to be 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. Now go to configure and select crossbar. You're going to select serial digital in for HDMI or RGB in for PS3 and component. Once you're done, click OK. Next, you're going to go up to broadcast and edit channels. And you're going to have to add your twitch.tv channel. If you don't have one, you'll have to register. I already have one set up, so I'm just going to click edit. Here you're going to just enter all your credentials like your username on Twitch, your password for your channel, and your channel name should already pop up. You can pause the video here to copy these settings down. My bitrate is kind of high because I have a good upload speed. If your stream lags because of these settings, just lower the bitrate a little. Now click OK and head over to the General tab. Do not disable Windows Arrow. For some reason, this capture card has some screen tearing issues when Windows Arrow is disabled, so leave that unchecked. Here you can select your USB or analog microphone if you want to do commentaries during the live stream, and just click OK. Now we're going to go up to View, Resolution, and if you bought an HD capture card, you're probably going to want to stream in 1280 by 720 but if your internet connection or computer can't handle it, I suggest going lower. Frame rate, you're going to choose 30 frames per second. You have the option to do 60 by clicking custom, but it's not recommended because it can lag to your viewers. You can go to view, view scale port, and you can adjust the size of the exploit window. This is recommended if you're playing on your computer monitor so you can see it better, but you can, if you want, you can just set it lower. Down here, you'll see your mute and audio settings for your devices. This is the mute for microphone and volume for microphone. And on the right is to mute your game audio or your just your game volume. Also, if you right click the preview, you can actually adjust the volume of the capture card itself. Now, all that's left to do is to click broadcast and then click your channel name. And then in a few seconds, you should be live. To view your stream's live chat room, you can go to twitch.tv, sign in, and go to your dashboard. In the twitch.tv dashboard, you can choose the title of your live stream. Also, you can choose what game you're currently playing, and all at the same time, you can see your chat. You can click here to see a preview of your live stream, but I usually leave it off because it can lag my stream sometimes. To view the dashboard and the exploit window at the same time, just drag each to the side. Now you should be all set to stream with your Game Broadcaster HD. If this tutorial helped you, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Also, if you want to see the quality of this streaming setup, you can go to my twitch.tv channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching.